fed from the fire hose and you're going to get so much information that it becomes clutter and garbage in your head and you can't really do anything with it. Um, but looking for one piece keeps it manageable. So I invite everyone to just stop for a moment and take a breath and come to your center point. As you breathe, a relaxation breath is really a slow, long, gentle exhale breath. So a gentle inhale and then a long exhale, the same way you would breathe if you were blowing bubbles from a wand. If you blow too hard, you splash the solution everywhere and you don't get bubbles. If you don't blow hard enough, you don't get any bubbles. So focus on exhaling long, slowly and gently to make as many bubbles as you can. And let's go. Um, again, in the chat, if you could, um, I've got two questions for you this time. And the first one, the answer will be numbers. The second one, the answer will be letters. But how satisfied are you with your current life balance? One is not at all. Four is very much so. So one not at all, two a little, three somewhat, pretty much, and four is a lot, very much. How satisfied are you with your current life balance? Twos, threes, four, excellent, one. Something for everyone in here, all different ratings. Then question number two, what would you like more time for? Three answers for this one. A is personal time. B is family time. C is work or professional time. So if you had more time, where would you like to devote it? A, personal time. B, family time. C, work and professional time. And A's and B's. I might have missed a C. Okay, great. So seeing these numbers float by, you are not alone. No matter what answer you put in there, you're not alone. We all have wants and desires around this. So thank you for participating there. So let's start talking about what, what uh, balance is. These are some images that are part of the classic thoughts about balance. We've got the, the scales of justice where we like to see them perfectly balanced. We've got the stacked rocks, which I love looking at. They seem very calming, um, but they're pretty static. Then you've got the seesaw thing with the people on the pencil. Again, perfectly balanced. So what comes to mind when you see these like, perfectly static, balanced things? To me, I think, oh my God, they look so controlled. They look so precarious. I can't breathe. I might mess it up and knock it over and it'll fall down or fall apart. They look pretty fragile. Um, and it makes it look like there is no room for error. I can't change it or I'm going to lose control of it. Someone said they look hard to achieve. Someone said peace. Calming. So in that world, the world of one of these classic balance images. It, it looks great on paper. It's really hard to live that way. It's hard moment to moment, hour to hour, week to week to maintain that much control and balance in our lives. So I want to present another way um, that might feel easier to achieve. This picture, if you just look at the woman, she's balanced on some kettlebells. Um, she's she looks balanced, but she's not static at all. She is very, very active. She's recruiting a lot of. Now, I'm not sure how long ago I became muted. Sorry. Um, so this picture, the, the woman on the balancing on the kettlebells is very, very active. I'll repeat a couple sentences because I don't know when I'm muted. 
I don't even know how I muted. Um, she's constantly changing. She's constantly using her muscles, exercising little tweaks to all of her muscles to hold that position. And see, she's constantly making decisions and activating. It's a very active process to be that balanced in that way. That's how I think of balance. When we're thinking of work-life balance, it's very fluid, very active. Like riding a bike. You can just sit on the bike, but you're not balanced on it. You topple over. You you may look messy. Balance, the active balance might look very messy. It looks different to everyone. It's unique, takes many different shapes and forms. It requires a lot of recalibration, and that means you're never done. You can never leave your work-life balance unattended because it's not a static thing. It's in constant fluid motion. So what does it look like? This is what I say updated balance looks like. Ballerinas on their toes. A lot of action to hold that. Walking on a tightrope. Not static at all. There's a lot of recalibration, a lot of activity going on. Spinning a top. Riding the bike. The pile of rocks. It might look different. It is static and it looks very different than the other cairn, the neatly stacked cairn. Um, surfing is another form of balance. A lot of activity goes into that. You cannot stop balancing on your surfboard and still surf. Um, spinning plates, where you have the plates spinning on sticks and you have multiple ones, that's an image that I love. What parts of my life need attention? Do I ever need to take a plate off the stick? Have I touched that, spun that stick with that plate recently enough to keep it going? A lot of attention to keep it all juggling and moving. Um, a handstand, a headstand, while it might look static, the person doing it is actively using a lot of muscles, constantly recalibrating to prevent or to present that image that looks so controlled and so balanced to the outside. I like the duck swimming on the water, it looks calm and chill on the top half above the water. Underneath, his little feet are just pedaling, paddling fast to keep him going. I'm standing on one leg. You can stand up and try that right now. It it doesn't just happen. You don't just balance on one leg. You're you're recruiting a lot of different muscles, thinking about it, making adjustments all the time. So that is how I invite you to think about balance. Or this program, but also for from creating it from now onward. Let's shift into um, we'll shift into why. There's a ton of of words on this screen. We'll go over them. I just want to pause and see if anyone has any questions on what, like how I distinguish the the classic balance, the very static um, from the 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 new more real life balance, which is very active. OK, why do you want balance? Basically, it's good for your body, your mind, your emotions, your productivity. Um, you're better at managing stress. You have more focus, which translates to, to productivity. <clears throat> People with with good work life balance are better, better in life. They have more success in life often in their career, in their relationships, more happiness. Who doesn't want that? More success overall, so that more fulfillment. You're a more well-rounded person, oftentimes, um, and improved well-being. And well-being is your sense of wellness, not just your physical, but kind of your happiness, your satisfaction, your quality of life. So, we probably all want some or most or all of these health, uh, well, health wellness um, <laughs> balance benefits. <laughs> Having balance in your life builds resilience, kind of like the tree in the wind. The tree that was grown in a hothouse or a greenhouse 
never has the full root development and never is exposed to wind. Therefore, it never develops any skill in living with wind. If you take it out of the hothouse and put it outside, planted in the ground, that tree is going to snap or fall over, bend and break much more easily than one that grew outside in the wind in the elements right from the beginning. So balance is part of what a skill that we have that helps us develop resilience. We can bend and flex um, in the wind, in the waves of life. So if you have a piece of paper handy, um, get it out, make two circles on it. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can do this in your head and then do it later at home if you want. But what does, oh, this slide used to have nice colors in it. Um, make a pie chart. What does your work life, your life balance look like? I want a personal section, family, and work or professional. So you'll have three segments. I want you to use a 24 hour day because I want you to include your sleep. And that should go in personal. Most of us do not get enough sleep and we keep chipping away at it to make more time for personal, professional, or family. I want to take that option away. So you're doing a 24 hour day. Include your sleep. How would your pie chart look? How would you divvy up the time between personal time, family time, and professional time? What current is? Then I also want you to think about what would it look like as your ideal? If you had that ideal balance between personal, professional, and family, what would that look like? So making changes in life is about closing the gap between what it is today and what you want it to be. Mm. So as, excuse me, thinking about the distinctions, the lines sort of blur between personal and family time, especially um, these days, post-COVID, working hybrid or working remotely, especially has highlighted how much work and, and um, personal time blur. So to go back to, to personal versus family, personal is you. It's what you want to do. It's what nourishes you. So if grocery shopping, I would count that as family time. I'm doing it for the family. Buying a birthday card for my brother-in-law, that is family time. Personal time, when I have some spare time for me, I don't go shopping for family birthday cards. I don't go to the grocery store as a fun thing for me to do. So just distinguish how you consider something that you do routinely and you do it versus is it what you want to do and where would you put it in your time? So the work and um, personal time blur comes, <clears throat> we have access to work all the time. We have our phones, we have our computers. People can text us, call us, email us. Some company cultures you're expected to pick up, you're expected to answer and basically be on call 24 seven. You're expected to continue working while you're on vacation. That makes such a blur, you don't really know which compartment you're in anymore. And working, going from nursing, I was in the trauma ICU most of the time, going from that environment i could not take work home to now working as a coach an author a speaker i can constantly be working on something for work at home in the living room in the office on the patio it, it can bleed into any time or, or place so i went from having a very structured work environment that i had to leave there to one where it can be all over the place. It's like an amoeba, it can be any shape, any place. But a lot of people have found that in the last few years. So we're gonna address that. I wanted to give you a, a few different frameworks to look at your time and how you want to juggle your time. So life balance, the personal, family, and professional time is one. I want you to think of all your roles, all the different roles that you play. Yes, you are an employee. 
within that role, you might also be a manager or a leader. You are possibly a child, possibly a parent, a partner, a learner, maybe a caregiver. Uh, you might be a newbie at something. You might be an expert at something else. You're a neighbor, you're a friend. You might be an artist or an athlete. You think of all the different roles that you have. And then think where and how do you make time for all those different roles? Is there a role that feels a little lacking right now? Is there a role that's taking too much attention right now? Some of this you have no control over, but notice it anyway. So you've got all your different roles. Another framework you can use to look at, and this is one of the handouts that you had. Um, it's a wheel of life. Just a few examples of different parts of your life. Some may need a bit more attention than others. Some may be right where you want them. But consider your career. How satisfied are you with your career? Where you are, your compensation, your responsibilities, your ability to be creative and autonomous. Um, so as you score with a wheel, it's usually zero to 10. Zero is the hub, 10 is the outer rim. You're looking to see how smooth your ride is. So you'd score each category and then you draw a line and make the new outer rim. So the categories, you've got career, you've got financial, you've got significant other, spouse, um, a love relationship. You've got your health. You can you can dig into this one any way you want to. It can be physical health, mental health, emotional health, although there is emotional coming up on there. Um, it can be health as in diagnosis. It can be sense of well-being. It can be weight, strength, energy. But health is the category there. Personal growth. Are you learning? Are, are there places, things you still want to achieve, places you want to go in your your personal growth journey. Fun and recreation. Sometimes work crowds this one out and we don't make enough time for fun and recreation. So how would you score that? Are you satisfied with it? 10 would be the outer edge of the wheel. Very satisfied. Um, friends and family. How much time do you have for them and how satisfied are you with the time that you have with them? And then emotional. How how do you manage your emotions? Are you satisfied with your, your baseline emotional health? Do you wish you were a little more serious sometimes? Would you like to take the anxiety down a notch or two, um, bump the happiness up? So with your wheel of life, some categories may have a higher score, be further out, and some may represent like a divot or a, almost a puncture in the wheel because they're, close, they're scored closer to the hub a lower score, lower satisfaction rating. Just a way to let you in 2D see how your life maps out on paper. Are there categories that you want to put some attention to? Because balancing your life is about figuring out what parts of your life you want to enhance. Another framework you can use to look at your, your life is the body, mind, spirit. If we are a three-legged stool and one leg is for body, one leg is for mind, one is for spirit. When those legs are pretty even, we feel stable. We feel balanced. We do not feel overwhelmed. When one leg gets too long or too short, we start to feel wobbly and a little bit stressed. So the body leg would represent things caring for your physical body. Do you get enough sleep? Do you have decent nutrition? Do you move and exercise enough? And do you have at least basic hygiene covered? The mind leg is mental relaxation, mental stimulation, um, time with friends, laughter, an outlet for your creativity. And then the spirit leg is, do you feel fulfilled? Do you know your purpose and your contribution that you make in life? Do you feel like your contributions are recognized? Um, do you have a tribe who gets you? Do you have time for hobbies? And sometimes some of these legs, like mind and spirit, can, can cross over a little bit because hobby you could put in mind. Um, but the, the passion that you derive from a hobby, I would put over in spirit. 
So thinking of your stool, which leg maybe needs a little bit of attention? And with this framework, we tend to be naturally better at one leg and have to consciously put a little more attention in another leg. Totally normal. It also changes over time. So maybe when I was younger, I was really, it just came kind of naturally to take care of my body. I exercised well, was at a healthy weight, um, slept enough. But maybe at that point in my life, I really wasn't very satisfied. I really didn't feel like I knew what my purpose was. I didn't feel like I had people around me that understood me at the core. So I had to work consciously on building my spirit leg. Um, so thinking in that framework, we often also, when we're trying to balance our, our work life, we tend to skimp a lot of times on the personal time and especially the self-care. And this leg, this uh, framework can kind of highlight where in self-care do you really need some attention? And it doesn't always need to take very much time. So the last framework is to think about your values and your priorities. So if you have a vase and you have some rocks, some pebbles and some sand to fit in the vase, there's really only one way to make them fit in. So let's say the rocks are my values, my priorities, things that are very important to me. The pebbles are the daily things that I do. I, I shop, I work, I take care of things. And the sand is all that nitty gritty stuff that other people throw at me. It's other people's emergencies, things that other people are asking for, things that kind of get in my way. Maybe it's a flat tire. I wasn't expecting it. Didn't have room in my day for that. This just is sand. It's getting in my shoes and taking up space. So if I'm going to fill my vase, I could start with the sand. I could fill the whole vase with sand. I could let other people's emergencies and other people's issues fill my day and I have no time for me, for my priorities and barely enough time to put my, my pebbles in, which would be the daily things I need to do. So if I start with my priorities with my rocks, then I can, they can fit in the jar. I can sprinkle the pebbles in, shake it a little bit. The daily things I need to do can fill the jar. And then there's always room for a little bit of sand. But if I start with the pebbles in the sand, my rocks don't get in. So thinking about how you would fill your jar, your vase, what are your rocks? What are your core, core values, your, your priorities that you really want to get in every day? Then what are your pebbles? What is the sand? And when you structure your day, where is the time for your rocks? So <clears throat> a couple different frameworks you can use in going back to your, your pie chart of your day. How can you piece it out to move it closer to your ideal? You cannot move it to your ideal in one go because we simply don't have control of all of that. But as you are doing that, can you shrink the duration of something without shrinking the enjoyment of it? I want to propose that yes, probably you can. Some things are harder to shrink than others. I love gardening. I could be out there for four hours. But if one day I only have 20 minutes, do I go for it and do it and enjoy it? Or do I do the all or nothing? I don't have the full amount of time I want, so I'm not going to do anything. Some hobbies, some things you do, you can pick up and start, let go, and it doesn't really matter. Others, you do need a chunk of time to finish one part of it. Um, but if I do something that I really enjoy, that is what I need to do mindfully. Doing something mindfully is when my mind and my body are doing the same thing at the same time. So if I'm gardening, even if it's for 20 minutes and I can be fully engaged in it, then I'm more likely to remember that I did it. I, I was present while I was doing it, so I created a memory and I can remember that I did it. If I multitask while I do something that I enjoy, I'm basically diluting it. I don't have as strong a memory of doing it. 
So maybe you like to play golf. That takes a, a chunk of time. Could you play nine holes instead of 18? If you don't have time for nine holes, could you go to a driving range? Could you just stand in your front yard with your putter? Could you read a golf magazine? Is there some other way you could touch on something that you really enjoy, but in a smaller space so that you get the enjoyment? So as you're creating this balance, be realistic. Your pie chart cannot all be personal time because we have other things going on in life. It cannot all be work time because there is a you that shows up to work and needs some care and attention as well. Be realistic about how quickly you think you can change it. Know that as you change your your percentage of time you spend in one category or another, someone is going to be unhappy with that. Think through how what pushback are you going to get from any different compartment in your life when you try to change things? Because people want it to be static and stable and know what's coming, even though that's not really how life balance looks. Life balance is fluid and active and requires a lot of decisions. Knowing what is in your control and what is not in your control factors into this. Um, using the concept of subtracting to add, we've all got 1,440 minutes in a day. I might have to take something away or shrink something, even if it's just temporarily, to be able to add something else in. So I'm always juggling my rocks and my pebbles in that phase. Except good enough, perfectionism can get in the way of having the perfect or ideal pie chart of what my balance looks like. Good enough is often good enough. The perfectionism is something we put on ourselves. So kind of expand your definition of what what looks good, what is doable. Take breaks. Um, we cannot plow through everything. Um, a break restores us. It brings us back fresher and then we can be more productive. And this can be taking a break in any compartment of your life. They can be short breaks. Make a break be mindful so that you get the full benefit of it. And I mentioned doing the joyful things, the things that bring you joy. Do those mindfully. Really be present when you do those because that feeds your soul faster than anything else. Um, so some factors associated with creating your balance, kind of managing time. Time management is associated with this. Some of us are better skilled at managing our time than others. It's something that we can practice and work on and improve. Um, our moods and our emotions affect this, how well we take care of ourselves, our basic self-care. If we are run down, we don't have the energy to change anything and maintain a new change. So self-care feeds into this and is important. Um, boundaries, having boundaries and being able to tell someone no, can't do that. Um, that's not going to happen today. I need something. I'm I'm overloaded. Something needs to be removed if you want me to add that in. What kind of boundaries do you have with people? Boundaries alone is a huge topic, and boundaries take a lot of energy. You have to decide on the boundary. You have to continuously practice maintaining that boundary because some people will constantly try to push back at that. Um, and then transitions. Transitions affect how we balance our time. And I'm using the word transitions to mean a, a pause or a pivot, both between different activities we do each day, but also in our life on the continuum. So starting with the continuum of life, <clears throat> how I balance my day and my work and my life my and family time is going to look different depending on what stage of life I'm in. So the big transition points um, of life, like getting married, getting divorced, having kids, kids leaving the house and now you're an empty nester, moving, starting a new career, having grandchildren. Those are big, big life milestones and they generally require you to step back and, and rebalance how you want to fill your time, allot your time. 
Transitions during the day are smaller little points, but if we can have a transition activity, it helps us separate and know which compartment am I in right now. As I'm coming home from work, so coming to work and leaving work, whether I am physically going somewhere to work or I am stepping into my office or sitting at the corner of the table where my computer is, have a transition behavior so that you know I am in work mode now. It might be the, the fuzzy animal slippers are on. That means I'm working. It might mean I have on a suit and tie. I am now working. It might mean I am going to sit in this particular chair. That is my work chair. Maybe I have a certain scent or candle or essential oil I used at the beginning of a day to help me focus. What is your trigger that you are entering work mode versus home mode? And know what that transition is, because we need to decompress out of one mode before we enter the next mode. And if if home is happening or if work is happening in the home, it's really, really important to distinguish what am I doing right now? Am I working? Am I at home? It is super easy to blend the two. And sometimes you can multitask some of that. But but at least in your head, know which mode am I doing and how do I know that right now? Um, so transitions, noticing your transition point, your your end of work day going into family time or personal time can be you shut the laptop. <clears throat> you turn, you shut the door to the office, you clear your desk or the table wherever you're working. Um, could be you change into flip flops. Could be you play a certain song or you take 10 minutes and listen to a podcast. Um, like what is your transition so that you can leave some of the emotional baggage with that role in that role and start clean in the next role? So. Now is when you get to really work. What does balance look like to you? If you want to type your answers in the chat, go ahead. If you have um, a question, put it in. <clears throat> Is there an image of balance that you maybe had and are willing to let go of to try piloting a new one? Do you know where you lose time? Because that's usually the question everyone asks. So well, I just need more time to put in this compartment. We fritter away time all the time in different activities. We fritter away some of our work time, some of our personal time, some of our family time. <clears throat> Technology uh, fritters away a lot of it for us, with us. Uh, social media, sometimes we aren't aware how much time we spend just scrolling through social media, scrolling through the news, scrolling through whatever we're looking at, um, idly watching a TV show, Maybe you watched that same episode four or five times. Are you even paying attention? Do you notice it? Um, if you are truly engaged with the show, that may be time better spent than just kind of vegging out, zoning, walling off, trying to block your emotions by just watching Netflix almost as static in front of you. <clears throat> what can you add or subtract to create more balance in your life? Not necessarily time, but balance. And sometimes that comes strictly from paying attention. Am I doing it mindfully? Um, which role do you want to expand or contract? Do you even know what you're trying to pursue, what you're trying to accomplish by balancing work and life and home? And can you consider quality time over quantity of time? Um, a lot of times parents, especially if younger kids say, I don't have enough time to be with my kids. When if you if you look at quality time, you put your phone down, you are eye to eye with them. You're throwing a ball, you're playing a game, you're talking, um, but it's just you and them. That quality time goes such a long, long way toward maybe you spent instead an hour with them, but you were both fiddling with something else. You were reading your phone, you were doing work, you weren't paying full attention to them. That time doesn't register as meaningful as the quality time. So thoughts on what you can do with some of this information. 
any ideas how you might want to restructure your your pie chart? I have an, another question for you, and then you can have questions for me. Um, two questions, really. Do you have one idea? If you go back to your intention that you set in the beginning, did you get one idea that you can take away and, and start creating or recreating your balance? Did something from your intention, did you get that? Whatever you intended to get, did you get something related to that? If not, please ask and we can talk through that. And then just as a general question, what caught your attention from this program? What part jumped out at you as being worth remembering? If you want to unmute and talk, that would work. If you want to put it in the chat, that works as well. So let's work through something so that it's not just clutter in your head after this hour, but you've got something tangible you can work with. Stop multitasking to remember and do things mindfully. And some things multitask perfectly together just not everything. When you are having a conversation with someone that is usually not, you shouldn't be having another um, communication thing going on. So talking and walking goes well together. Talking and typing an email do not go well together because you're pulling from the same part of your brain. In multitasking, we are not really doing two things equally at one time. We are shifting our attention back and forth. And in that little space between, we lose things. We make errors, we aren't fully paying attention, and it takes a, a good chunk of time to refocus. A couple people want to do the, the stop multitasking and do the joyful thing mindfully. <clears throat> Grocery shopping chores around the house aren't things you're doing for yourself, correct? And that you might not enjoy them, they're just pebbles. You need to do them, they're daily things. Sometimes just looking at them that way helps shift and rebalance them. The other handout that was um, offered is your ideal work day, ideal day worksheet. <clears throat> it just can help you write down things that you really enjoy doing, things that bring you joy, <clears throat> and seeing them on paper and thinking, when was the last time I did that? Um, how can I bring that back? How can I build it into my day? So what else can you do with this information? Thinking of the base, all too often fills up with sand, never taking the time to work on my own rocks. Yeah, and then this is a, a question for everyone. What do you need to be able to work on your rock to really prioritize what you want to do? Is it assertiveness training? Is it communication skills? Is it boundaries? Is it um, you, you know how to do it? You've done it in the past. You just need to refresh that skill and put your foot down and stick with it. Think through all the obstacles that might get in your way as you start to shift things around and reclaim some time. Usually it's personal time that people want to reclaim, personal or family. It's usually not that I wish I worked harder and longer. <clears throat> so thinking of that, if where would you, how would you put less time into, into work? If it's bleeding out of your work time and into your home and family time, and it might have only done that mentally, how can you control that? I'm just gonna write down what the rocks really are, understanding the importance of boundaries. <clears throat> so some of our, our potholes in life are in our head. It's what we think we can or can't do. Um, sometimes it's a whole mindset shift that we need. The time is there if we change our approach to it, our mental approach to it. Any questions for me 
I've asked you several questions this time. So it sifts a lot of sand. I like that. I like that expression. So shifting your work-life balance is going to take a fair amount of energy, a fair amount of focus. Um, you need some planning and forethought, knowing that you're going to get some pushback and it's not going to feel comfortable to you or other people initially. Um, but oftentimes if we explain what we're doing, people can understand, accept, adapt. Um, there are some roles that it's much harder to shift. So look where you have more control and you can do some shifting. So I want to leave you with the thought that balance is an ongoing process. It's never done. It's not static. You can't walk away. You can't say, I have balance. I'm good. It's done. I'm going to go about and live the next 50 years of my life um, because your balance might be precarious because it, it needs so much attention and it changes. You're surfing, you're riding that wave and each wave is a little bit different from the last one. So being resilient, learning new skills, adapting is gonna carry you, carry you through with the balance. As a coach, I'll throw out a lot of people need accountability partners. Um, how are you going to track your progress? Do you need someone to support you while you're tracking your progress of making changes? Um, who can you call on for that to support you? And that varies for each of us. So any last thoughts or questions? Having a physical transition point to change from work to personal time. It helps our brain to compartmentalize. It's like closing folders or files in your computer. Um, you know it's done. You know where it is when you need it again. But if you leave everything open, a lot of tabs open on your computer. It slows it down. Same with us. So having a transition activity um, helps us know which folder is open, which is closed. What am I doing? Where am I? Oh my, the esoteric things of life. All right, I thank you all. Enjoy creating that, that ideal work-life balance that is constantly, fluidly transitioning. Okay, everybody, I think that's it. Thank you so much again for joining us. And uh, keep a lookout for our next wellness initiative. It's going to be coming up in about a month, and we'll send a lot of emails out to remind you of that. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all.